ADHD stands for all dogs hate drugs. Awesome dads herd dinosaurs. Afternoon ducks have depression. No, I'm just kidding. We like to kid here. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And a quick Google search will tell you that it's a mental health disorder that causes attention deficit issues, uh, hyperactivity, and impulsiveness. I don't know who decided that last one wasn't important enough to make it in the title, but there you go. I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD until the very end of high school which is kind of like buying the cheat codes to a video game console you don't own anymore. But since I've been diagnosed, I've been able to learn a lot more about myself and how, how this weird little noggin works. While I do feel like people are usually pretty generally aware of ADHD, I also feel like it's one of the more commonly misunderstood mental illnesses. There's this stereotype about it that's like the toddler running around screaming while sniffing markers and trying to like play tag with a rabid squirrel. And while that may be how it manifests in some people, the way most of us actually deal with it is more nuanced. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the video, I'm gonna be talking about my own experiences with ADHD. I'm not trying to project or speak for anyone else in the community. This is just me talking about what I've dealt with personally. I'm just a guy trying to help people who've maybe gone through the same thing I have. So yeah, that was a flawless transition. One of the biggest things people seem to not understand about ADHD is that it's more about executive dysfunction than anything else. And yeah, I know executive dysfunction sounds like it means when Jeff Bezos can't get it up, but it's not that. I checked. There's a lot of complicated definitions about what executive dysfunction is, uh, but basically it just means it's really hard for us to plan ahead, really hard for us to start assignments or manage our time, and really hard for Jeff Bezos to to get it really hard, what am I doing? This is a serious video, what am I doing? I know what you guys are thinking, like, oh, you guys are really disorganized and procrastinate. Let me just CC every teenager ever on that. Uh, and to that I say, uh, I once sat and stared at a blank Google Doc for three and a half hours, having a complete emotional breakdown because no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't physically bring myself to start writing an essay. So I kind of just sat there and cried. So like, yeah, um, maybe, maybe it's a little bit different for us. This constant struggle to get things done or finish tasks also often leads to a lot of really negative self-talk from people who have ADHD. It's like if you're a little baby giraffe and you haven't learned to walk yet because your legs are still doing that weird wobbly thing that baby giraffe legs do, and you see all your friends walking around fine, you're probably gonna feel bad about that and think there's just something wrong with you. But that's bullshit because you're a baby giraffe and you're amazing and cool and life is hard and I've lost myself in this metaphor just a little bit. The other problem with negative self-talk is that it's made exponentially worse by the fact that it's basically impossible to convince anyone that you actually have ADHD. Everyone always believes that ADHD is real, but no one will ever actually believe that you have it. This is a problem especially found in anyone who got labeled as a gifted child growing up, which is also a whole other education system nightmare that we don't have time to get into right now. But once you get labeled like that, it's really hard to convince anyone that you could also be dealing with a learning disability like this. It's like, yeah, I could read good when I was eight, but now it takes me four hours to write a one page essay two weeks after the due date. So maybe there's an issue here, guys. And it sucks because it feeds into this never ending cycle of internalized hatred that most people with ADHD have. Growing up thinking that you're just lazy or stupid or don't try hard enough isn't gonna make you wanna work harder. It's gonna make you wanna just lay down, give up, and have yourself a big old cry sesh. And that's one of the reasons why when I first found the ADHD subreddit, it gave me the biggest sense of relief. Finally, I had people who were able to put into words things that I had never been able to even explain to myself, a community that understood and supported me. We were like a super socially anxious biker gang that also got bored of riding the bikes after like 20 minutes. So for my fellow ADHD biker dudes and dudettes, I I've put together a few tips to help you live with ADHD. Maybe these will help you, maybe they won't. The point is, uh, Al Gore should have won the 2000 election. All right, let's get into it. Tip one, make lists. Now, normally when people say they make lists, they're talking about like notification lists on their phone. No, these are what I call little baby bitch lists. I want physical lists on sticky notes that you can see at all times. Each week I write out all the tasks I have to get done and I put it on my desk right there. So I always know what I have to do that week. 
These are really helpful not only because crossing a task off a list gives me a dopamine shot on par with heroin, but also because it takes away a lot of the anxiety of always feeling like there are things you should be doing. When you're disorganized, it's a lot easier to feel like the walls are closing in because you don't even know everything that you're supposed to be doing. But now, even when I am behind, it makes it a lot easier to not just immediately fall apart. And that's pretty, pretty neato, pretty, I should have picked, I don't know, I wrote that. I wrote the word neato. Ugh. Tip two, don't be afraid to go on medication. Now, there is this fear among people considering medication, especially among those of us in a creative field, that if we go on medication, we're gonna lose our like creative spark or whatever. I know this exists because I felt it too before I started taking meds for the first time. A lot of my humor comes from just being random or weird. And so I was worried that I was gonna lose that humor when I first started taking meds. Those fears though are just your insecurities talking. And we don't like to talk to our insecurities because they're gross and probably have bad skin. You will still be you on meds. And if you think taking them could help you become happier with yourself, I think you owe it to yourself to at least try them because you deserve to be happy. Tip three, go to therapy. Look, if you're living in 2020 and not going to therapy, you're behind the times. Not going to therapy is old news, grandpa. So get your, get your tuckus down to some therapy ASAP because it'll help you deal with everything and it's really good. So please do it. And finally, tip four, be nice to yourself. Like I touched on earlier, most of us with ADHD are prone to very negative self-talk. For most of my life, I was just telling myself over and over again that I was just lazy and that was my whole problem. Not only is this not productive, it's just not true either. I know this is like the hardest thing in the world to just do, but try to be nice to yourself whenever you can. Take pride in the little things like cleaning your room or cooking yourself dinner or starting an assignment a few days before it was due. Those are all great accomplishments that it's okay to feel proud of. Please, if for no other reason than just for me, remind yourself that you are smart, you're loved, and more than anything else, you're okay. Thank you for watching my video. Please have a nice day.